Well, good afternoon. I'm Reverend David. Thank you for joining me today as we're looking at seven victorious virtues that we can use to overcome vice. So the question is, like, which vices do I need to subdue and how might I practice or utilize virtues in a habitual way uh, to help me overcome those vices? So um, we were reading Catholicism all in one for dummies, and uh, this is really a comprehensive overview. It's five books in one about Catholicism, all of the different aspects of Catholicism. And one of the things that we were reading about was the seven deadly sins and the virtues we use to overcome them. So what I thought we would do is look today at the seven deadly sins and maybe look at some of the practices we can employ in our habit of daily life to help us overcome those. Now, this kind of takes some self-examination and some willingness to really um, admit we need to work in certain areas. So what's the first one? Pride. Pride is the first deadly sin and pride really is, a, is awful. If you've ever known anyone that's really prideful, pride is an inordinate love of self. It's when we exaggerate our perception of our own abilities and gifts, but it kind of ignore our weaknesses and imperfections. Uh, and sometimes this will lead to rationalizing our sins or, or fooling ourselves into thinking that we are the source of our own greatness. And in the worst cases, pride really rejects our need for God's teaching and God's grace. Well, humility then reminds us that uh, we need God, that what we have comes from God. And there's a lot of ways we can practice humility and incorporate it in our life. We can attend mass. Um, we can pray throughout our day. We can be obedient to scripture, basically, keeping the commandments. You know, Jesus humbled himself unto death on the cross. Um, so we can definitely follow his example with these acts of service. Maybe take up a small menial task in your home or church. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. What's another one? How about envy? Envy is like a resentment of another person's good fortune or joy. And the church distinguishes between two types of envy. One is material envy, another is spiritual envy. Um, material envy resents others for having more friends, talent, money, beauty, strength, etc. Where spiritual envy is kind of a little bit more nasty. It kind of it gets uh, envious of other people's spiritual progress, their holiness, um, how God's anointing their ministry, that kind of thing. And, uh, and kindness is really the virtue we employ to overcome envy. So how might we uh, practice kindness? Well, we can pray for another success in business or life. We can help somebody achieve their goals and their prayers. How about we celebrate somebody else's accomplishments or speak highly of them when no one is around? Uh, or maybe we thank God for what those people have accomplished and what they're contributing uh, to, to the lives of others. A third deadly sin is that of lust. And we uh, um, uh, counteract this with chastity. So lust is looking at or imagining or even treating others uh, of either sex as sexual objects uh, to serve physical pleasures rather than treating them as individuals that are made in God's image, that are worthy of respect and honor. And, uh, and I want to point out that being attracted to other people is not a sin, okay? This is normal. God created beautiful things. Uh, spontaneous thoughts might occur, and the authors of the book are, are very clear to point out that that is not sin, uh, but dwelling on them is. So chastity uh, is a form of temperance that helps modest our sexual desires. And of course, chastity in a big sense would be abstinence for those who are single. Um, but also chastity can be like redirecting our thoughts and habits. So um, if we notice someone's attractive, we don't dwell on it. Uh, we don't utilize our smart devices, computers, TV, social medias to view enticing images. And if you have enticing images that are popping up on your feed, um, just flag them as inappropriate. Get rid of them, okay? Don't let yourself be tempted. And then retrain your, your smart devices algorithms. You can do this by, you know, clicking on pictures of puppies or fly fishing or whatever. You can um, kind of help your phone give you the images that are more pleasing to you and more holy. And then just thank God if you're married for your spouse regularly throughout the day. Consider uh, the love you have for them. What's another deadly sin? How about anger? What do we use to fight anger patience? Well, anger is the uncontrolled, sudden outburst of emotion, hostility, and sustaining thoughts 
uh, of desire for revenge and harming others. You know, it's normal to be angry. We all get angry. In fact, if I was robbed, um, it's okay to, to be angry and want justice. That's kind of a righteous indignation. You know, that's, that's not a sin. Um, but let's look for justice and not look for revenge, you know, put it in the proper authorities and we need to pray for those who anger us. Uh, and patience is a key to overcoming anger. So what are some habits that can help us form uh, patience? Well, we can pick up a patient hobby like fly fishing, uh, maybe painting or crocheting. We can begin the practice of centering prayer. Do that for 20 minutes. Sit totally still. That'll help your patience. I guarantee it. Uh, count to seven before you respond in an emotional conversation. That'll help. Driving the speed limit something easy that'll help. Or how about uh, putting away our smart devices we're in a conversation with somebody you know we're so impatient that we're trying to multitask all the time and you know what suffers sometimes is our conversation with those or how about just reading scripture daily these are things we can do gluttony is another uh, deadly sin and so gluttony is the immoderate excessive eating or overindulgence in alcohol and I just want to point out um, occasional and responsible consumption of alcohol is not gluttony and it's not a sin um, Jesus turned water into wine, but drinking to the point of drunkenness is considered gluttony. It is a sin. So, um, also legitimate eating disorders are not considered sin. Uh, they're medical conditions. So the sin of gluttony really is freely choosing to overconsume and overindulge. So fasting is what we use to, uh, maybe counteract that. And we can fast from food. We can fast from activities. We're talking about this all through Lent. You know, pick a certain food, give it up, or maybe choose a certain day of the week. In the early church, it was Wednesday and Friday, and then choose not to eat sun up to sundown if you can medically do that without having any problem. Or you could fast from an activity and donate that time to something else. Maybe pass on, you know, uh, going out shopping or going out for a meal and instead pray, read the scripture or serve the church or charity during that time. And then six, uh, Greed. Greed is a, is a vice that's overcome by generosity. So what is greed? Greed is um, an inordinate love and desire for earthly possessions. It kind of involves cherishing material things above people and above relationships. And kind of, you know, I need to point out that having money is not wrong, though. Okay? We need money to live. We need money to survive. And, and having money for those rainy day emergencies is not wrong either. Uh, having money is, is actually a good thing. But greed is when we say, I will derive all my security in money rather than God. And so this is like a sign of mistrust in God's ability to care for us. Uh, but by all means, yes, work, uh, make wages, save money. Uh, generosity then helps kind of promote a detachment from material things and places God and money kind of in their proper perspective. So how might we practice generosity? We can practice it materially. We can practice it in spirit. We can practice it in action. You know, we can give uh, a meal or the amount of a utility bill or even more to charity, a church, a foreign mission. We can help someone that we know with their real needs. Um, giving in the spirit. This is one Joan Walsh shared with me and I really loved it. She's talking about dedicating all your prayers throughout the day for one thing, one person. When you're washing the dishes, praying for that person. When you're uh, getting ready and making your bed, praying for that person. All throughout your day, one person. I love that idea of generosity. And then giving an action. You know, you could give your times and abilities to the benefit of another for a church or charity. And then finally, sloth. Uh, this is the seventh deadly sin. And, of course, diligence is the virtue we use to counteract this. Well, sloth is nothing less than laziness in a material or spiritual sense. Uh, so what's material sloth? Well, material sloth is never wanting to work, but always wanting more and more rest and relaxation. Then spiritual sloth is not tending to one's spiritual life, never wanting to pray, never wanting to participate in the life of the church or help the mission. Life's all about me. I have no spiritual responsibilities whatsoever. Uh, and, uh, and so diligence keeps us dedicated and committed to our material and spiritual responsibilities. Now, there's some things we can do here, and I think that making a list and keeping schedules is the best thing you can do to build your diligence and fight against sloth. One, this is the way I start. Never hit snooze when the alarm clock goes off in the morning. Get up right away, make your bed. No questions asked. 
Decide on an amount of time that you're going to pray every morning. Stick to it. Don't allow yourself to go, oh, well, I don't feel like getting up today. It's so warm and cozy in my bed. No, that sloth, kick that off. Be diligent. Get up and pray. Read a devotional or a chapter of your Bible at night. Create a list uh, of a goal that you want to accomplish and stick to it. Maybe you want to clean out the garage. Make a list. Put dates on it. I'm going to get all the trash out of the garage by this Friday. I'm going to rearrange all the shelves by the following Friday. I'm going to do and so. Keeping lists will help you be diligent. I like to do something, and that is I like to park at the at the far side of the parking lot and then walk into Walmart and stuff like that sometimes uh, just to force myself to be extra dil diligent uh, and, and not allow myself to get lazy. But those are some of the things we can do. So you got to ask yourself, which vices do I need to subdue and how might I practice the virtues in a way that's going to help me overcome them? Those are questions we need to ask. And I just want to point something out. As you're integrating some of these practices of building virtue to fight these vices that you identify in your life, um, remember that a relationship with God, the Father, through Christ the Son, utilizing the grace of the Holy Spirit, and calling on the communion of saints are all essential parts to building and strengthening our virtues. This is not something you have to do alone, okay? So as I identify areas that I need work on, yes, I pray for God's grace. I ask for the Holy Spirit to give me grace in that area. I call on the saints. I pray through the saints, whatever. Uh, listen, you need to use everything you have at your disposal and uh, take it seriously. Well, thank you for joining me today as we look at uh, seven victorious virtues over vice. Christ.